start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shire Bahashem, Rakakadash, that were honest to the apostles and the elders, peace, blessings, and honors to all the brothers and the truth. This is called everlasting life. So I want to get my, you know, <clears throat> my diligent and due diligence and work, you know, and two cent pretty much on the whole everlasting life thing. You know, is there a cycle and then you return back to the spiritual world or does everlasting life mean we're going to live forever in the kingdom? You know, I'm from the school of thought because I follow, of course, the elders and the apostles of GMS is that everlasting life mean we're going to live forever. You know, you read about things saying Yahweh Shai is going to swallow up death, you know, so you're not going to die, you know, but we're going to break it down to give more of that understanding, you know, with a, just a couple scriptures. This is not going to be long. This is not going to be hard, you know. Originally, I didn't say anything about it because a lot of these things is like, it's, it's things, this ain't, I want to say that it's petty, but whichever way you believe on this topic, it's not doing a big difference. If you believe that we're going to live forever in the kingdom, if you believe we're going to live for a thousand years and then a cycle and then come back in a new body, however you feel, you see what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's not, that's not going to change prophecy, the prophecies, you know? So you could look at it either way, you know? And this is what Israel do, you know? We get into arguments over small differences and small things, you know? But it's going to be that way understanding that it's going to be that way until the lord comes back because the lord is the missing key a lot of people ask well why don't all israel and all the camps come together why is it so hard because it's going to be that because we're missing our missing we're missing that that key to the puzzle that last piece to connect us all together which is yahweh shai when yahweh shai come back that's why when you go to the book of ezekiel 37 it says we're going to be made one when yahweh shai come back then he's going to make us perfect jeremiah 31 starting at verse 31 hebrews 8 and 8 he's going to make us perfect by putting the law statutes and commandments in our inward parts and then we're going to be one we're missing that piece we're never going to be one and the curses are not going to be off of us until yahweh shai comes back so having an evil eye towards your brother that curse is still on us to this day even even amongst the camps and another thing everybody that's in a camp wearing fringes saying they doing the work saying they hebrew israelite it's not real a lot of brothers in here for different reasons and they gonna be exposed for that you know so you can't just think just because a brother doing the work or he got fringes on or he um a member of a camp that he's a part of the elect that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that and you can't think that a brother that's not a part of a certain camp right but he's doing the work that he's not a part of um the elect because i mean believe it or not there's brothers in this truth right if you're not a part of their camp they don't look at you at, they don't look at you as a hebrew israelite they look at you like you're not even an israelite you know and the lord gonna deal with that you know because that's going directly against the commandments you know that's the whole thing that paul was going through accepting the gentiles which are israelites even if they wasn't in the truth yet getting them to convert to come into the truth little by little you know, that's the whole thing that Yahweh Shai was talking about, too. This is Hebrews chapter 1, so we're going to get straight to the point, right? Um, Verse 8, but until the son he say thy throne, Hebrews chapter 1, O God, is forever and ever. The spectra of thy righteousness and the spectra of thy kingdom. So when it says the kingdom is forever and forever, it's the same thing when it says that we're going to have everlasting life. It's talking about the same thing. The kingdom we know is going to last forever. So is our lives. It says thou has loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fe fellows. Right. This is the elect. It says, and thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the works of thy hand. He created the earth, right? Now, if you understand going through the rest of Hebrews 1, I mean, even Hebrews 2 and Colossians 1, the earth was made by Yahweh Shai, but Yahweh Shai was made by the Father. Um, here, let me prove that real quick. Because it's right here in Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 10, for it became him for whom all are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons into glory. So it's saying all things come from Yahweh Shai, just, you know, just to um, prove that point real quick. But back in Hebrews chapter one, right, um, verse 11, they shall perish, but thou remaineth and they all shall wax old as a garment, right? And as a vest and a um and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, 
you know, and then we know that the Israelites are going to be changed going to first Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to be changed into those, um, in, um, those immortal and corruptible bodies, but thou art the same and thy years should not fail. So even if you say that you live a thousand years and then you got to go back to the spiritual world, and come back as a baby, that's, that's your years failing, you know? So that's why we say the life is everlasting because your years should not fail. Why do we need to go back to the spiritual world if we're going to be made perfect and we're not going to sin? Why do we need to go back to the spiritual world if our body is going to be incorruptible? It's not like our bodies are going to get old, break down and crusty and weak. We're going to have powers. We're going to have that spiritual power. We might get better and better as time go. Like why? So why, why are we going to need to get rid of our bodies and come back in a new body and go to the spiritual world? Why is that going to need to happen? You know, how is shy is not going to be doing it. Did the Bible said? We, we do not know what he what he is when he should appear, but um, roughly paraphrasing, but we should be like him when, um, when, when we see him. Roughly paraphrasing. I think that's what? Second John, uh, first John chapter three, I believe. Let's see if I can find it so I don't mess it up. Roughly paraphrasing, you know, we're taking our time in here. Uh, man. Let me see if I can find it because I got uh, another Bible and it's kind of the layout's really different, you know. But you got to be able to pick up a sword and, and use it, whatever it be, you know. Um, here, no, I don't want to lose my place. All right, right here, I'm getting to it. Yeah, how is Shai's not going to be coming in and out the kingdom? Got to go get a new body, be reborn as a baby. So the elect's not going to have that. Here, let me see. And it said we should be like him. This is First John. Chapter 3, right? Verse 1. Behold, what matter of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. This talking about the elect. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, right, we should be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we're going to be made like Yahweh Shai. We're going to have the powers and the abilities that Yahweh Shai had. We're going to be joint heirs to the kingdom. It tells you that if you go back to Hebrews chapter 1 that we was in, because I'm losing my place here, um, and you keep going. Verse 13 says, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. That's going back to um, Psalms uh, 110. It says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who should be heirs of salvation? We're going to be heirs of salvation, heirs to the kingdom. So we're going to be made like Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai is not going to be, you know, live a thousand years, got to go back to the kingdom, be born as a baby. So we, we're not. We're going to live forever the same way Yahweh Shai is. That's the power that we're going to get, you know. It says heirs to salvation. And then it says ministering spirits. The angels going to be ministering spirits. It breaks that down in Psalms 91. How they're going to be there for us to protect us. And to do for us. And to help us. You know, going back to, now, now let's jump to 1 Corinthians, right. Like I said, this ain't going to be long. This is going, and I'm going to actually get through it, you know straight to the point because you can look at it whichever way you want to look at it when it comes to that situation in this way but i'm showing you why our apostles teach it the way they teach it and that why this is the correct way this is first corinthians 15 i want to get straight to the point verse 50 now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god Neither does corruption inherit incorrupt incorruption. So we're not going to be corruptible. We're not going to have to die or you, you could say that you're not dying, but you're just going to have to, I guess, return your spirit to the spiritual world and come back as a baby. We're not going to have to do that because the bodies we're going to have are going to be incorruptible. Behold, I show you a mystery. We should not all sleep, but we should all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. That's that change. We're going to be changed like what? We're going to be, we just read it. First John chapter three, we're going to be changed like Yahweh Shai into what he is. That's what we're going to be changing into. Now there's difference of levels and there's difference of power. 
and there's difference of ranks even amongst the angels that's why you have something called michael the archangel which means a high-ranking angel there's differences but we're going to be for the most part we're going to be made to what he is you know and have that power too with him we're joint heirs to, to the kingdom with him right it says for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality we're going to be immortal so when this corruptible should have put on incorruption and this mortal should have put on immortality, then should be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallow up in victory, meaning we're not going to die no more. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? So if your soul has to go up back up to the spiritual world, then what's going to happen to your body? Won't somebody have to put it in a grave? Isn't that like in the law? You have to put it in a grave? But it said, look, the grave ain't going to have no victory over us. So if the grave ain't going to have no victory over us, whatever, um, you know, we're going to have a mixture body, like a superhuman body. What's going to happen to that body if you got to go back up to the spiritual world and come back down as a baby after a thousand years? What's going to happen to that body? So it's shown, you know, we're going to live in those bodies forever. Now, would you have spiritual power to be able to change things about you? Yeah. Would you be able to change your height? Yeah, it talks about that. The Lord has the power to do that. Change your image? Yeah. So we don't have to come back as a baby. You see what I'm saying? It says, um, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, um, Yahweh Shai and Mashiach. And you think that's crazy, but the same people of y'all that think that's crazy, that that's possible, y'all sit there and watch X-Men all day. And y'all watch the little blue girl, I forgot her name, y'all watch her on X-Men, she shapeshifts, and she could change her image to anybody just by shapeshifting. Y'all sit there and watch that and love that all day, but think this is crazy. Where you think they got that shit from, man? They got it from the Bible. The X-Men is the elect. It's a play on the elect and the powers we're going to get. It says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be yet steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, which we're doing. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And doing these videos, man, supporting the brothers, showing up to camp, praying, executing righteous judgment in your gates, this is not in vain. You know, even when things get kind of low and ain't nothing really popping off, that's life changing. That work that you continue doing, it's not in vain. You know, a lot of us got small YouTube channels, you know what I mean? So you might think that your work not being seen and you put so much passion and effort into it, but you just got to remember that. It's not in vain because if nobody don't see it, the Lord sees it. And the Lord and the angels is jotting these things down. Then it's saying, matter of fact, since we're in Revelation chapter um, um, 20 right now, verse 12. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So, so the angels got to be keeping track of our works. How are we going to be judged according to them? The Lord and the angels all together, they keeping track of our works that we do. And that's what we're going to be judged over. Matter of fact, you go to Revelation 21. I mean, yeah, Revelation 21, verse 4. It says, and God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. And there should be no more death. We're not going to die no more. We're going to be immortal, meaning we're going to have everlasting life. Neither sorrow, neither crying. Neither should there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. If you live for a thousand years, you got to go back to the spiritual world. Somebody going to miss you. Somebody going, damn, he gone. After a thousand years, he gone. It said we ain't going to have none of that. So that shows you it's more in the case of we're going to live. When it says everlasting life, it means forever. I know a lot of brothers, it'd be hard to believe it. But like I said, y'all watch all these um the superhero movies superman lives forever he don't have an expiration date he don't get old y'all sit up there and watch that all day and not even understanding that they get that from the bible the elect is going to be supermans and superwomans but we're going to be a lot stronger and a lot more righteous and we ain't going to be goddamn edomites with leprous leprous skin like superman is and we ain't going to have a weakness, you know, kryptonite. We ain't going to have a kryptonite. This is Isaiah chapter 25, last one right here, verse 8. He shall swallow up death and victory. Death is going to be swallowed up in victory. 
this is where first Corinthians is um quoting from. Psalms chapter um Isaiah chapter twenty five. It says, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off the, all their faces. Revelations 21 is quoting from here. And rebuke, and in the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. So the Lord has spoken this, man. If you got fear in the Lord and you believe in the Lord and you got faith in the Lord, then when he say he swallow up death and victory, ain't going to be no more death. So what that mean? We're going to live forever. Everlasting life, you know, hopefully this has been edifying with that. I'm going to say salvation to you. Let's show on.